Oscar's over. Yet every Sunday we continue to commemorate the power of faith in Christ's Godhood. But today we do not speak of an event from the gospel. Today we remember the fathers of the First Ecumenical Council. The council that established the Nicene Creed that we hear in every liturgy and we read at morning prayers today. It too has the same message as we heard in the weeks prior. It too reinforces God's, Christ's Godhood. And it too shows us examples of piety and faith. But almost as a precursor, as a pre-feast to the church's birthday next week, Pentecost, we see what the first early church had to stand and fight for. And it is good for us to understand the gravity of what that fight was. For there, it wasn't the body physical of the church that was attacked, as it was during the Roman times with persecutions, with martyrs. No, it was the soul of the church that was assaulted. When one bishop died, there were two of the best in that area to be elevated to the rank of bishops. One was Alexander, the other was Arius. Both were well taught, both were intelligent, both were well spoken and could attract people by their word and by their teachings. But Alexander was pious and humble and well beloved by his father, by his flock. And he was chosen instead of Arius to become bishop. Arius then fell into a very, very common trap. He fell into the trap of self love and he started to teach against Alexander and teach against the church. He began to say that Christ was not one of the Trinity. He was not God himself, but he was created by God. And in thus way, basically usurping the very sacrifice that saved all of us. Self-love, brothers and sisters. When have we not fought against it? From the days of Adam and Eve to this very Sunday, do we not fight against our evil? Do we not fight against ourselves? How many heresies have come and gone? Not attacking the physical body of the church, but attacking its very soul. Even when the body of the church was being attacked in Russia during communism, a heresy of the new church was there, also subverting and attempting to destroy it. But yet humility and love and unity in Christ's name, not in ours, is what prevailed even when Arius' heresy spread to such a point that God was believed the church would perish. Yet it still prevailed. In today's readings, in the epistle and in the gospel, we hear of this warning, we hear of this faith, and we hear of this prayer. St. Paul admonishes to be careful of those who want to take gold and silver, saying he did not take it. He only wished the faith to grow. 
and Christ prays for his apostles. I pray not for myself, I pray for them that you have given me. As surely as Paul and Christ spoke of his apostles and of their that young church, they speak and pray for us today, this day. They pray for us that we stay true, not only in body, not only in the so-called superficiality of faith, coming to church, trying to fast, but coming to church in here and fasting in here. And this preservation of the church rests not in the hands of priests or bishops, it rests in the hands of all of us. For the strength given from above most often comes to those who are not clergy. Witness the course of I come. Our protectress in the Orthodox Church of God. It did not come to a priest or bishop, but hunters found it in a tree. Witness the mirror bearing even an icon of Montreal, it came to Brother Joseph, who was not clergy. And with this other such miracles that come to people, or to small parishes, highlighting the humility, highlighting that those with piety may not wear vestments or crosses, but ones that can carry the faith and so on, save it. So brothers and sisters, as we continue to celebrate ascension, let us ascend ourselves, not in body, but in mind and soul, beyond this world, beyond the sinfulness, so when we truly enter into Pentecost, worthy children of our Lord.